Today we're going to see 11 interesting AI news from the last week that might probably blow your mind. And I'm not even trying to clickbait, this is actually insane. It's not just about LLMs, but we have got models that can do deep fake. We have got models that can actually mimic realism uh, with insane level. And this episode is sponsored by On Demand, but more on that later. The first one in our list is Mistral AI's new important announcements. One is that they've made fine tuning easier. And the most important release is that they have released the alpha version of agents. So you can build Mistral agents using their platform, Leap Platform A. And uh, this is very similar like what OpenAI tried to do with custom GPT. So you can uh, use that and then deploy it and then access it as an endpoint. That means it's beyond what custom GPT is. In custom GPT, you were always logged in with chat GPT or OpenAI. But here you can go beyond that. I'm definitely looking forward to try it out. So the next one in our list is a new series of multimodal models. And this is for specifically vision language understanding. It's not it for audio, but this can take image or video or text as an input and it can give you high quality text output. It is quite Im impressive to see what this can do. And in terms of the benchmarks, you can actually see that this model does pretty good. According to them, this is better than GPT-4. I'm not sure if it is better than GPT-4. I would definitely love to try out this model and then say that. But this is a good model. I mean, having an open model that is as good as this is a quite a great thing for us to have. And this is a model that comes with open weight. So you can start using this model. The model is available on Hugging Faces Model Hub. Following that, we have got a viral GitHub repository. This has been quite insane last couple of days, as you can see here. By this time, it has got uh, 12,700 votes. And this is a deep fake system. So you can just upload a picture and then use your photo live. This is live. And then they should do the deep fake. And as you can see with the demo, even with lights, it is like quite amazing. And um, again, th this is good as a demo, but I, I don't know if we can try out this thing. But a lot of people have started suggesting, saying that, do we need a technology like this? That is a question that people started asking, like, is, is this important? Is it going to increase the net positive into this world? I'm not sure. I don't have an answer for that. But this is an interesting development. People are going bonkers with this. If you can try out a deep fake of this quality, especially with all the lighting and stuff, real time, this is quite going to be insane. This video is brought to you by On Demand. On Demand is a platform that can accelerate your AI product development. On Demand's agent marketplace provides you extensive, exhaustive list of AI agents that you can right away get started. For example, if you want to just build an Amazon shopping assistant, all you have to do is go to On Demand and then use the Amazon shopping plugin. On Demand also lets you upload your own AI model, which is bring your own model, and then you can serve that model, deploy that model for your own AI application. Check out On Demand, a link in the YouTube description. Thanks to On Demand for sponsoring this video. Next one is Flux. Flux is something that we have already covered on this channel. I have got a tutorial about how you can run Flux on Google Colab. But Flux is insane. I mean, Flux with a new LoRa component called Realism, you can see the level of realism that you can create with Flux is absurd. You can see the humans. And in fact, this is one girl that you would see. This girl is quite popular on internet now. Everybody's been sharing this girl. The realism here is really good. The fingers are quite amazing. Um, the face is a little bit plasticky, but even that has been improved. You can see a lot of people improving. This is AI generated. Can you believe it? I mean, this is not real. These are not real human beings. And Flux is making it insanely possible to create human beings that are not real, like not real human beings, but they look like humans. And you can see the skin tone too much perfection even now. But if you don't closely look, this is quite insane. The eyeballs are good. Everything that we used to use to figure out whether an image is AI generated image or not is going out of the book. This is this is, this is super good. Flux is really good with text generation and Flux, as we can see here, is really good with human generation as well. Google has got some interesting announcements with Gemini 1.5 Flash. One primarily is that they've made fine tuning completely free, which is a brilliant move. See, you want to fine tune the model and they've made it fine tuning completely free. But then you will host the model only within their platform so that you are tied up to the platform. No disrespect. I absolutely respect the fact that they've reduced the cost. But you know, it's a brilliant business move. They've reduced the cost for Gemini 1.5 Flash. Now Gemini 1.5 Flash is just 7 cents. If you are using less than 128,000 context window or tokens, 
or if you want more than that, if you want more than 128,000 context window or tokens, then you have to pay 15 cents. So 7 cents and 15 cents for input and 30 cents for output and 60 cents for output. And Google, as we know, also does something called context caching. With that, it is further less, like a lot lesser that you might forget about every other API service provider. But there is another interesting announcement in this, which is the PDF processing. I tried out a couple of PDFs. I have a separate video coming out probably tomorrow or day after tomorrow. It is completely absurd. I started even questioning whether this is the end of RAG. I might make it a YouTube title to have some spiciness in the title. The next one is we have got a new open model from China, which is Quen to Math. We already know that Quen is one of the best models, open models that we have got across the board from the smallest to the largest. Now Quen to Math is technically the best mathematical model. So at this point, if you see here, Quen to Math 72 billion instruct model is the best one. And if you have seen our latest podcast where I spoke to the third prize winner of AIMO, Artificial Intelligence Mathematical Olympiad, one of the things that David said during the interview is that if you were to try out the contest next time, you have to try out this latest model. So this model is insane, out of box, zero shot. And this is a model that Quinn has open source or uh, released it open with open weights. And you can access the model in Hugging Faces model up. They've also released the bilingual model, English and Chinese model. And in terms of the cost efficiency, as you can see here, this model does even better than the 400 billion parameter model. Like you've got Llama 3.1405 billion instruct model. Now you might argue that that is not a specialized model, it's a generalized model. Even then within uh, specialized models, the Numina ba Math 7 billion COT model, which won the first prize in AI Math Olympiad. This is far and above, uh, very much better than uh, that particular model in zero shot. This is just zero shot. It's insane. I'm definitely looking forward to try out this model. So the next one is an interesting solution where we have got a new uh, product that is called Pathfinder, primarily for literature review and knowledge discovery and astronomy. The idea here is that even though it is just for astronomy, you can expand it beyond astronomy. So the way the schematic work is very interesting. You've got a simple input query and uh, they've got a bunch of things, a keyword filter, you've got the citation filter, you've got the date filter, and then they're doing hide, very expansion technique. Then they're using similarity search and then they're using re-ranking. In this case, I think they're using it from Cohere and they've got the top K retrieved papers. And from that, they are trying to do retrieval augmented generation and react. So this is the reasoning plus action method. And then finally, they are generating the answer. I found it very interesting to see that they've got a setup like this in production, which people love. And also this is uh, probably a very good way to see how you can make a a system that is beyond a very simple RAG system. The next one is a new open weights RAG model. This is a model that has been fine tuned specifically to have better RAG use cases. So there are two takeaways from this. One is that the fact that they managed to train this model within less than $25 shows how much a cheap computer is becoming and what kind of things that you can do with that. And then the second thing is the fact that this model is performing better than a lot of other models. For example, if you see the benchmark, this model has got, uh, where is RAG? The BRAG SLM is here. And uh, with 128,000 context length, this model is doing 52.29, 1.5 billion parameter model is doing 46.43. Based on what kind of requirement that you have got, so you can host a 1.5 billion parameter RAG specific, ultra small language model, and still get the chat RAG benchmark, which is 46 which is not very far away from models like GPT. GPT-4 Turbo has got 54 and Command R Plus has got 50. So it you are not like too far away with just 1.5 billion parameter model, especially if you are optimizing for speed. They've got more details on the, the blog post that they've released about how they train the model, how uh, you can use the model and all the other information. The next one is interesting, a robotics experiment. Uh, this is from the company called Figure and uh, Figure has got the second version of the model. This is a company that has been funded also by Sam Altman. And this video is not posted by figure, rather it is posted by BMW group. And they've shown like how they've got figure inside a BMW group. It's a, uh, it's quite insane. It's, it's, uh, it's like a futuristic iRobot type movie where you see robots walking around and doing certain things and the kind of stuff that they're doing. It is, um, it's unbelievable that this is not the future. This is present. Grok has raised $640 million uh, in new fundraising event and uh, they want to 
provide the fastest demand for uh, the fastest AI. Like they want to cater to the demand that they've got. We all know that we have been using Grok for quite a while. They've got the free tier, which a lot of people love using, but also a lot of developers love using Grok. Whenever I speak to them, primarily because of the speed. So if you care about Grok or if you care about uh, speed, then this is a great news for you. Uh, the final news today is that we have officially got the GPT-40 system card. While I might make a separate video about that, uh, there is a, se a certain interesting aspects about uh, this particular system card, especially if you are always wondering until now that why OpenAI did not release the voice engine, then you should definitely go read this paper because you can see that there are certain cases in which the AI, in this case, the OpenAI TTS uh, text to speech system started using different voices, which they didn't want to happen. So one of the reason that you can pro pretty much understand when you read the system card, I hope this news collection was helpful to you. I wanted to keep it small and let me know in the comment section. What do you feel about? See you in another video. Happy prompting.